Hello, Namaste and good evening. This is Manashvi and on behalf of Puroptim IBITS team, I'd like to welcome you all to our IBITS e-learning session. A brief introduction about our program, the IBITS e-learning session is an initiative by Puroptim and it is an interactive program where we discuss various optometric topics. Before we start with today's session, a small reminder to our audience, please don't forget to keep your mics muted and if you all have any questions, please type them out in the conversation box and we will discuss them after the session or presentation is over. So uh, without further ado, today we have Dr. Chandrasekhar Chavan who is going to talk to us about how we can incorporate myopia control in our practices. A brief introduction to our speaker today, Dr. Chandrasekhar Chavan is currently working in Orlando, USA at Laser Eye Jewelry and Oviedo Vision Center. He has completed his PhD in physics from University of Bombay and is a fellow of Scleral Lens in Education Society, USA. He's also the inventor of cosmetic and prosthetic RGP scleral lenses in addition to being a scleral lens consultant, myopia control practitioner, orthokeratologist, optometrist, and an ocularist. He is also the first fellow of Boston Foundation for Sight in USA. Like Honorable Dr. Abdul Kalam, Dr. Chawan also returned to his motherland to bring back advanced technologies in sector of custom-made artificial eyes, scleral lens, orthokeratology, myopia control, RGP cosmetic scleral lenses, which then has been providing special effect in Hollywood and Bollywood film industries. He has patents in multiple fields of works and has also authored two books, published scientific papers, and is truly a renowned personality. His name is also listed in World's Who's Who directory in USA. He is indeed a real gem. We welcome Dr. Chandrasekhar Chawan, sir. We are very pleased and excited to have you here with us. Thank you. Thank you, Manasu. You are so kind of you. So at the outset, I would like to thank the four of Tom organizers uh, who has given me this opportunity to interact with all of you today on uh, subject of incorporating myopia control into your practice. Uh, I'll try to give you as much tips, uh, as many tips as possible uh, with, within this uh, 45 minutes to one hour presentation. Why we should incorporate myopia control? That's the basic thing, right? We have been doing optometry practices, refraction, uh, contact lenses and uh, you know diagnostics and a lot of other stuff but the whole world is going to become myopic almost 50 percent of the population by 2020 this is uh, one of the predictions uh, from uh, brian holden vision institutes uh, so it's a epidemic of myopia like now everybody knows what is uh, pandemic uh, so it is similar to that, but the epidemic is uh, different than pandemic that it is uh, related to the uh, regions and particular caste communities and uh, races. So basically it's a genetical factor that uh, combines with the natural uh, environment and it manifests. So almost one third of the world's population lives in India and around our countries. So for us, it is a major concern. So you look at it as a eye care practitioner, that it is your responsibility to learn, understand, and provide this treatment for our patients. So opticians, optometrists, and ophthalmologists, these are the eye care practitioners that we consider we work as a team, uh, hand in hand. So all of these three entities, are responsible for myopia control. So how do we start? So to get ready for incorporating myopia control into your practice, of course you have to learn. So education is most important, then certification, because you can learn from Google, you can learn from so many places, but somebody has to cross check it, right? So that's where the certification comes in, whether you are running correctly or not. Then of course you need a hands-on training uh, so that you get a practical experience on how to proceed with the things. Uh, you may need little extra equipments like topographers and uh, any other uh, trial sets uh, for that. If you are into orthokeratology, of course. Then, of course, uh, you should, you know, learn and apply. If you do this, you can give a better service to your patients or customers. They can become loyal to you. And of course, you can stand out in a crowd and definitely 
you will get a more revenue out of your practice. So there are a lot of certifications available, certification in multifocal soft contact lens fitting for myopia control, then orthoperatology certifications, then certification in myopia control spectacle lens fitting. This is a new thing that is coming up uh, now that FDA has approved. So far, FDA never approved the myopia control. Uh, so whatever treatment we were offering uh, to our patient were all uh, off label, they call it. But now it is approved. The multifocal lens is approved by FDA. Some special spectacle designs are being approved by US FDA. So now opticians also has a major role into this. So, so there is a one day certification course for optometrist that uh, we conduct at Shaker Eye Research in Mumbai. Uh, you can email at shaker at shaker.com for that if you are interested. Of course, all of you are optometrists or ophthalmologists or opticians, so you know myopia. So I'm not going to go into uh, you know, basic details. So two more words you should now understand and learn is myopic defocus and hyperopic defocus. Of course, myopia is focusing in front of the retina. So you have to get some kind of optical device or some device where you can get that focus onto the fovea, right? And you have to get this focus here. This actual length is a measurement to understand whether the eyeball is deformed or it's causing any stress on the retina or not. So you need to you need to measure the actual length. So this is a peripheral retina. Now, sorry about this. Okay, so myopic defocus and hyperopic defocus, right? Now what happens is this information on the peripheral retina is the reason for elongation of the eyeball. So now I'm going to make a real bold statement here. The moment you give prescription of single vision glasses for a kid, you are pushing that child into myopia progression. Because whenever you give a single vision, you are correcting, you are bringing that focus on the retina or at the fovea, but the image shell is like this. So at the peripheral retina, it causes a hyperopic defocus. Now this hyperopic defocus gives signal to the brain to increase and enlarge to get your retina in this position. Thus, the actual length keeps on increasing. Next time the child comes to you after six months to one year, you again give a full correction. Again, the hyperopic defocus gives signal to the brain. Now, why you should be worried about actual length? Because it is causing a stretch and stress on the retina and it can lead to some comorbidities that are sight threatening for the patient. What are the uh, comorbidities? Cataract, glaucoma, macular myopathy and retinal detachment. So risk of getting a cataract if your number is about minus 3.5, you have two times likelihood of that you'll get a cataract at an early age. Getting a cataract at the age of 70 is normal, but getting a cataract at the age of 55 or 60 or even 45 is not normal. So if your number is say my up to minus six, you are three times more likely. And if it is more, more than minus six, you are five times more likely. Similarly, you are at a high risk for getting glaucoma. As you know, glaucoma is the irreversible damage to the retinal cells. Your vision will get reduced from the periphery and it cannot come back. So again, similar things. If your number is keep on increasing, you are at a more and more risk. Now, major risk comes where there is a retinal issue like macular myopathy 
or retinal detachment. Now, this is almost 40 times every diopter. So, if you are less than minus 3, you are at a risk of 2.2. If you are up to minus 5, then you are at a risk of 9, which is 40 times more. Then minus 7, 40 times. Uh, then up to my, more than minus 7, you are 126 times. That means the patient is definitely going to get uh, retinal detachment in his lifetime at an early age. So, I compare this myopia with the hypertension or smoking a cigarette. So when you smoke a cigarette, now in India, there is a warning written on the uh, cigarette pack. It, you know, it kills or it causes cancer or it is not good for the health, right? Why? Because there is a definite study which shows that if you uh, smoke one packet of cigarette, you are higher risk of getting hypertension and getting a stroke. And of course, you get a cardiovascular disease like heart attack. So myopia is also similar to that because it is going to give a permanent vision loss. And of course, you can do a surgery, you can do treatments, but as you know, glaucoma cannot be reversed. Retinal detachment, surgical complications are a lot. And, uh, you know, multiple surgeries, ultimately patient goes blind. So what are the risk factors? So if you are doing, of course, a lot of uh, indoor activities, nowadays because of the computers and mobile phones, children are not going outside to play. They're playing on the mobile phone. So a lot of continuous activities uh, for close work, uh, in like a homework or study. Uh, and when they come to us, we prescribe single vision glasses. So this is a basic risk factor. Then if you have on one parent, which is myopic, the risk increases. And if you have two parents, both are myopic, then the risk is still more. So we call it up to minus five, minus 0.25 to minus three, we call it mild myopia. So up to minus three, you are not at a much higher risk of losing vision. So what, what that factors are, too much indoor activities, continuous work, single vision, low and indoor lighting, you know, you have, very low lighting conditions and use of LEDs in the home. So I have uh, developed some point system with Dr. Maskati. So if you are up to minus three uh, and this factor, so I give one point for that. I'll, I'll tell you in detail about my point system afterwards, how to uh, calculate the risk factors. If And one parent, so the child is minus 3.25 to minus 5, parent myopic. And you have to restrict myopia progression less than minus 5. Because after minus 5, the things goes out of proportion and patient can have a lot of difficulties in later life. So I give two points for that. And if the power is more than minus 5, both parents are myopic, then three points. Here you can see some, you know, I have drawn some slopes here so first slope is little less right so if you don't do anything the child is going to go down on the slope like that okay and if this is a big too much of an angle then definitely child is going to go down and crash unless you put a break now how to what i mean by putting a break is intervening and giving some kind of myopic uh, myopia control active uh, devices or treatments so this is what the point system I was talking about. So I call it Chandrasekhar Kuresh uh, myopia morbidity risk point system. So what you do when a patient comes to you, when you take a history and do your evaluation, you start giving points for every factor. So if the child is having single vision, give one point. Um, my one parent myopic, one point. Two parents myopic, two points. History of myopia over two generation, give one point. Like that, you give points for all if your child is having astigmatism one point less than 2.5 hours of outdoor activity one point like that you give points and that points will decide whether that child is at what risk level so if after giving all the points if it is only three points then child is at low risk you can let it go in the sense you can just keep on monitoring uh, that child uh, every one year and uh, see what is changing 
uh, six points is at a medium risk. You have to start doing some active myopia control. And if the child is getting nine points, then you have to vigorously interfere and do something to control the myopia progression. Otherwise, the child is going to get irreversible vision damage at the age of 55 to 60 years. Right. So as an eye care practitioner, you are responsible. It is your duty to understand and help the child when he is adult. So ultimately, we are helping our society. So every one diopter increase in power is 40% higher risk of comorbidities. Right. So if you see a child at the age of five and he is a metro, actually he should be plus hyperopic child. But if it is zero, that means he is already going to go into myopic progression. So you can think of that, advise the parents and keep on uh, uh, watching, uh, do a regular follow up and keep a watch on that. And the moment you get uh, that it is myopic, if you can convince the parents, you can start early intervention. Uh, your intervention, early intervention doesn't mean that you have to give glasses or start atrophy. Uh, you can ask the child, uh, the parents to spend more time outdoors. I get the child outdoors more than 2.5 hours, two and a half hours. Uh, good uh, diet, green vegetables and all healthy lifestyle. You know, that can also control uh, the reading and writing can be reduced uh, after sunset. So you can check and give this uh, risk morbidity risk points and monitor. Here I would like to introduce uh, one slide, uh, Dr. Earl Smith. He's a US scientist who works on animals. So interesting research he has done on animals and birds, chickens. And after creating some defocus or some special uh, lenses, he has seen that the shape of the eyeball changes. Even if you cut off the optic nerve, the shape of the eyeball changes. Why? Because the peripheral retina is important for the growth of the eyeball. So just to understand, this is a fovea near periphery, mid periphery. So near periphery and mid periphery is important for a actual elongation or the growth of the eyeball because a lot of rods are present there. As you know, rods and cones for near the fovea, you have cones, which is giving you a you know, color vision and uh, all that stuff, but the rods are the primitive. That's how we started in the evolution uh, process. The rods were the first one. So they are still there, but that is in the mid periphery to near periphery. And they are the one who is responsible to send a signal to the brain and tell how much eyeball should grow. So that's where the myopic defocus theory comes in. So if you can get that hyperopic defocus inside, that is called myopic defocus by some kind of optical device. You can send a signal to the brain that instead of growing, stop growing and maybe reduce. It may not reduce, but it will put a break on the actual elongation of the eyeball. So what choices we have? We have uh, multifocal or uh, progressive spectacle lenses. Then we have a multifocal soft contact lenses. You need at least two focus, right? One for the seeing clearly, that is for the distance that will give a focus on the fovea. And at the periphery, we want something that will give a focus inside the retina, right? So you have uh, distance at the center and at the periphery, there is a near correction that is plus uh, power there. And orthokeratology lenses, which are actually came into practice as a myopic uh, alternative treatment for myopia. But over a period of time, they realized that because of this reverse geometry design, it is causing plus power and that is giving a myopic defocus on the retina. So that's how it works. Now, if you see at this particular, you know, uh, picture here, when you give soft contact lenses, soft multifocal contact lenses, you are treating the 360 degree of retina. Uh, ortho -K also does 360 degree retina. Whereas when you use spectacles, it is treating only half of the area. So if you see the previous slide of Earl Smith, there is going to be a shape uh, modification and uh, only 
half of the treatment will be given. So what you need is a 360 degree treatment. So of course, let us start with orthokeratology. As I said, there are a lot of uh, free uh, training programs, uh, certification programs online. I'll be giving you some links uh, later in my slides. Uh, you must go online and see. It's very easy and simple to understand and learn the concepts. Of course, you need to do a hands-on practice and other stuff to go into details. But basically, what is orthokeratology? It's a reverse geometry contact lens, and it reshapes the cornea when you are sleeping. It's just like ortho dentistry. You can do some, uh, you know, wires that a dentist does wiring and everything, and gets the uh, teeth in a position. So similarly, you can change the shape of the eyeball by using this reverse geometry lenses. So you wear in the night minimum six hours and the holding time that is during the daytime patient don't have to use any correction and patient can see clearly so for that you need an extra instrument called topography because now you are doing some changes and modification on the cornea so you should know what you are doing uh, if there is any changes to be done uh, if it is not working for some reason uh, going back to topography you understand what is going wrong so you need a full refraction you need to know k1 k2 that is the corneal curvatures HUID decides the diameter of the lens and there are certain companies who are offering this type of lenses in India and our continent Euclid, Contex, OK, Paragon, CRT. These are the famous brands and there are so many other brands which are uh, coming in the India. So this is called overnight orthokeratology. It works up to minus eight diopters and uh, it works up to minus three. Of course, you have to have a special design uh, like a toric uh, orthokeratology lenses. Uh, for there is a difference between ortho K for myopia control and a regular ortho K. So regular ortho K has a optical zone or treatment zone about 7.6 uh, mm. Whereas for myopia control, you need a smaller optical zone. So to create a myopic defocus at the periphery and effective myopic defocus so that you definitely get a uh, signal to the brain that stop progression. So it's a special design for myopia control. As I said, pupil size dependent, uh, smaller optic zone uh, to cause a myopic defocus at the peripheral retina. Now, when you have a smaller optic zone, there is going to be a distortion or aberration in the vision uh, uh, because of the peripheral uh, shortening of the uh, defocused area. But in my practice, I have found and all over the world, it has been noticed that children don't complain about that. Only the adult complains if you, you have a smaller optic zone because then in the evening while driving or doing activities, they find it, you know, distortion difficult. So children usually don't drive. So no problem. So here you can monitor the actual length. You can use a scan or IL master and you can confirm or cross check with the refraction every one year. So these are some of the uh, websites that you can uh, go online and do your certification. Get MRL certified, ortho k, uh, oklens.com, uh, Paragon CRT also has, uh, you know, uh, free certification programs. Myopia Research has some programs. So these are the websites uh, that you can log on, uh, go to the certification section and uh, provide your details and uh, you can actually they will give you some uh, training like a teaching slides and then they will ask you some questions and if you pass those questions at the end of the sessions you will get a certificate uh, that you can download for hands-on training and certification you can go on shakara.com and inquire uh, for that so uh, this is a practical hands-on two-day training uh, for a charge and uh, if you are really serious you can attend that or you go and go to any other optometrist who are doing uh, orthokeratology uh, practice and learn under him. The third option that we have, which is very famous among ophthalmologists, most of the pediatric ophthalmologists are prescribing this low dose atropine. Now this started with Singapore, um, uh, Donald Tan, uh, who is a pioneer in this, uh, their famous study is called Atom 1 study and then they came up with the Atom 2. In Atom 1, they used 1% atropine and then they formulated it to 0.5, 0.1% uh, like that. And uh, But it was not easily available or freely available 
uh, because not many uh, companies uh, manufactured that. Fortunately, in India, a company called uh, Entod has come up with a Mitro Hydrox, which is 0.01%. So it doesn't cause any accommodation lag. It doesn't cause any pupil dilatation. It doesn't cause any side effects and it is safe and easy to use. Uh, whereas in the US, what they did, they did one study called sample study and they found the most effective dose is 0.025%. Uh, since we have 0.01%, you can have a double dose. Uh, so this is how I uh, use uh, atropine for my children. So in India, it's 0.1% atropine. So one drop at every night, and you can repeat one more drop after 30 seconds. So the dosage is more. Uh, it has to be continued for at least two years. Then maybe you can taper it off by you know, putting it alternate nights, continue for one month, then again leave two nights, one month, like that you continue till one week, alternate for one, one, one month, and then after six months you can stop it. Then monitor the child after two years or one year. If you see any slightest progression, you can again continue using the atropine hydrox. If you are worried that the child is in a uh, high risk group or you want to uh, do some more aggressive myopia control, then you can combine two therapies. You can put atropine as well as you use some kind of dual defocus device like multifocal soft contact lenses or orthokeratology. Or of course now the spectacles are also coming up in the market. So this you can do. You can start from any age, five years to six years. It's up to you. Uh, the moment you realize the child is going to go into myopia progression, both parents are myopic, it's a high risk. If you can convince the parents, you can start the active interference. Now come back to multifocal soft contact lenses, which is easily available nowadays in India also. So as you know, we need to focus one for the foveal uh, correction, that is to see clearly, and second for the myopic defocus to send a signal to brain to stop progression. So this MySight company uh, of, uh, MySight is a brand name. Cooper Vision is the company who got a US FDA approval for their multifocal design. And uh, it is definitely proven that it is giving a, some kind of myopia control. Progression is reduced or stopped. Uh, so they have a one day disposable soft contact lenses. They are still not available in India, um, but slowly it will come. Uh, so it has a, a four treatment zone and it is plus two diopters. So this is a distance correction. Then there is a plus two addition to that. Whatever is the distance correction, say minus three. So it will have minus one here. Then again, minus three here, minus, plus, uh, minus one here. So like that, it has a multiple uh, focus and that theory they use for giving a myopic defocus. In myopia control, uh, when we give ortho -K lenses, it is definite. It gives almost 80% myopia control because you get more than plus six diopters in defocus. Here, of course, plus two diopter, but it, they have shown that it is effective. Uh, in India, we have MF ARC multifocal soft contact lenses. They comes in daily, weekly, and monthly disposables. They are customized. The previous one, this one is fixed. It's a unifit lens. Uh, you can't alter much of it. You can't change the di uh, diameter or pupil size or anything. Here you can change whatever you want. You can give the pupil size, you can give the HVID and then they will decide what best diameter of the lens and base curve, etc. It is available up to minus 12 diopters and it is in plus three addition. It's kind of better. Uh, so, you have to mention people size hvid k1 k2 power and you can email it to this laser eye uh, 2020 at gmail.com and they will get back to you so if you want to start basic that is what people have been doing most of the ophthalmologists are using this kind of treatment which is at combined with atropine bifocal spectacles executive bifocal uh, is uh, more effective than a progressive addition lenses because it covers more area. In fact, the first study on executive bifocal, which was published from Canada, showed 50% myopia control. That's how the interest started in optical industry. 
to give more and more defocus areas. So the first approved design uh, by US FDA is sight glass vision. So they have, uh, of course, they have not disclosed the design, but they have done a lot of studies and uh, they come up with a, a pattern and those uh, lenses are uh, in prescribed. They got almost 75% myopia control in 12 months time. Uh, and action length control, they got up almost 50% in 12 months period. So it's interesting to know that designs. Uh, another company which is very famous is Zeiss Myo Vision Pro. Uh, they have some kind of a design which is 360 degree. Uh, and um, it call, it, they also have two different designs, Zeiss Myo Kid and uh, Zeiss Myo Vision. Of course, they have different designs uh, in the lenses. That is optical lens, which is easy to use. Uh, it For the people who are afraid of putting contact lenses in the eyes, this is the easy and better way. Uh, of course, uh, the most important thing with the contact lens, uh, multifocal soft lens or ortho K, is exactly centered. So there is no distortion. There is a definite continuous signal on the brain. But when you wear glasses, as you know, the children's are very notorious. They don't keep it focused. The, the spectacle keeps on falling down, going up and down here, there. But of course, it still works. So SLR also has come up with Myo uh, P Lux design, uh, which has uh, again uh, kind of a uh, you know double executive bifocal kind of design. So going back going to back. the uh, Earl Smith. Uh, picture of the chicken. So you can see this is going to be a deformation of the uh, eyeball. And of course, the when there is no treatment, the, that area is going to elongate. Where is the treatment? It is going to get controlled. So bifocal, regular bifocal is not going to work as effectively. But you have a choice at least to start somewhere. Uh, there is uh, another product which is now available in India and uh, online, which is uh, My Stick On. So it's a uh, 360 degree optical device that can be stick on any spectacle, uh, which is uh, roughly giving you uh, multiple, you know, myopic defocus on the retina. If you want more precise, more controlled uh, myopic defocus, uh, then it is Myo Vision. Uh, by our glasses. So it's a customized design to control myopia progression. It comes in polycarbonate material. It is a UV protected optical glass. It has optical markings for easy fitting. It's a cosmetically appealing lens. Uh, it is anti scratch, anti reflection, and high index and lightweight. So it has some special designs uh, for myopia control. Then Nowadays, uh, we have seen that most of the children has astigmatism, a lot of astigmatism, myopic astigmatism. And this ARC company has come up with a RT vision. Is the first time in the world anybody has come up with this design, which is specially targeted at a astigmatism control. It can be combined with myopic astigmatism, that is spherical myopia, minus number, and astigmatism. So that can be done with this particular design, the same polycarbonate, UV protection, optical markings, etc. So these uh, photographs that I'm showing you is just a representation of the design, uh, but it is a customized design. So what it means is you have to give a lot of information to the company. So like pupil size, HVID, K1, K2, and vertex distance. If you have actual length, it is much better and age of the patients. Spectacle RX, then patient's age. See, all this information you will already uh, get from your Kuresh, uh, Chandrasekhar Kuresh, Mayapaya, morbidity, these factors. If you have that, you can send that image also. So, last three years RX uh, for better Mayapaya control. So, getting all this information, you send it to laser eye, uh, laser. 2020 uh, at gmail.com and they will design a special lens for you and ship it to you. So it got stuck again. 
so it is customized for individual patients it will have a marking that you just uh, put it at the optical center uh, visual center of the uh, uh, patient that is ipd matching and uh, you will get a exact uh, effect of that lenses so the shekhara research has done a lot of uh, research uh, and created a special software that gives optical and chromatic aberrations uh, on the optical lens to get the uh, myopia control and astigmatism control the lenses will be delivered to the to your optician or optometrist or ophthalmologist and you can get it fitted into the uh, special small uh, uh, spectacles for the kids so this is of course uh, not just for anybody that means you can just email and get this you have to get a certification so your optometrist has to be myopia control certified optometrist to get this device uh, delivered to them so so basically in the certification they will be they will train you how to take the measurements uh, how to measure how to monitor and how to control so you can get yourself certified there is a a uh, website called myopiacontrolresearch.com which has a lot of info important information and links there are a lot of handouts pdf you can download there is a lot of patient education there is a lot of uh, handouts that you can print on display in your clinic so uh, there is another interesting thing is a directory of myopia control practitioners uh, and centers so you can become a member and uh, pay their fees and get yourself uh, listed on the directory so that anybody searches in google myopia control practitioners near me your name will come up so that's the advantage uh, for you to build your practice it's a practical for you to grow so certification hands on training etc is always going to count if you are really serious about incorporating this myopia control you have to do this little extra certification program and hands on training so there is one uh, free calculator available online to convince your uh, parents that this child is going to become myopic at the age of 17 so one famous uh, calculator which is free is by brian holden vision institute uh, you can just type in brian vision vision uh, institute uh, myopia calculator and you will get this so it looks like this so you put in the my whatever is the prescription now age now and what control you are going to do and uh, you will get a uh, this graph which shows if you don't do any control you are going to get for minus 0.5 up to minus 6.75 if you do any control the child is going to become 3.5 myopic at the age of 16 like that so if you do aggressive control you can still reduce it uh, there is another uh, website called mykidvision.org uh, that's american website where you again put in all the punching all the numbers and you will get a uh prediction of how much myopia the child may get if you don't do anything and if you do anything like a, a bifocal spectacles or orthoperitology or multifocal spectacles multifocal contact lenses you are going to get a different results so that is a good uh, you know indication or help for you to convince your uh, parents most important thing is more than 2 and 1/2 hours of outdoor timings lifestyle modification and good eating habits this is definitely you can apply day one right then you have orthokeratology low dose atropine multifocal soft contact lenses myopia control spectacles and of course avoid continuous close work so after 45 minutes or 30 minutes give a gap of 5 minutes 10 minutes look at a distance and again sit and do all the homework or reading writing in a bright daylight uh, try and avoid uh, any close work after sunset so this is one free handout uh, which you know combines everything in one go uh, if you are giving a single vision glass this is what you are going to get at the age of 18 or 20 thick glasses the child is going to look like this so these are the um, if you have a low myopia uh, then cataract uh, mid myopia that like is uh, your risk is moderate then cataract or glaucoma uh, and if you are at a high risk of course retinal detachment so these are some important links uh, that you can go 
online and learn, understand, get yourself certified and incorporate these myopia control practices into your practice. Uh, we are scheduled one Zoom meeting on next Friday at seven o'clock called Coffee with Chandrasekhar and Ajit Rime. If you are interested in more practical conversation, you can attend this meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. That was a wonderful, wonderful presentation. And we have learned invaluable tips and lessons for our practices. And I'm sure, like me, our audiences have also immensely enjoyed it. So uh, shall we move to the discussion, sir? Please, please go ahead. Uh, so the first question we received is from Mr. Dhanaraju, who asks that uh, in bifocal, the defocus happens only in the lower part of the retina. And so what about the upper retinal area? That is what I said, right? So if you give up simple bifocal, you are treating half, whereas you need something which will give defocus 360 degree. But that's why all these Zeiss and SLR and uh, Sight Vision and ARC uh, companies have come up with the 360 degree defocus designs. The uh, advantage of, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, go ahead. Please continue. No, sir, please continue. No, so th that's what I was saying. So uh, the advantage of this uh, arc has a addition of astigmatism control. Most of these design are working on a spherical component. So you can have astigmatism converted into a spherical equivalent. That is, if you have minus three astigmatism, spherical equivalent is 1.5. So they will add that into uh, whatever is your myopia, say minus two. So your power will be minus five, something like that. And then they will give addition of plus three or plus two or whatever. Uh, so that design is working, but it is, uh, in my opinion, it is not, uh, you know, accurate. So you have to have a specific design. It's if you customize your optical lens, a bifocal or 360 degree bifocal, you can have an effective myopia management. Okay, then coming to the uh, astigmatism, uh, we talked about astivision. So what is the working principle of astivision and how it helps to control the progression of astigmatism? Yeah, just now, as I said, you know, in uh, astivision, this for the spherical component, there is a different uh, optical aberration and chromatic aberration given on that particular axis. And in the opposite axis, there is a stronger addition given uh, optical as well as uh, chromatic aberrations to tackle both the curvatures of the uh, retina so that you get a 360 degree effective uh, control in the actual length growth. Uh, and uh, could you so also explain your, uh, okay so uh, could you explain so your uh, please continue sir I'm go sorry ahead, go, ahead. go ahead go ahead go ahead man Manasvi, go ahead Yes, sir. Uh, so could you explain your take on prescribing the base in PRISM as a measure to arrest the myopia progression? Well, that has been very popular, uh, you know, uh, method, thinking that accommodation is causing this myopia progression. That is how uh, the ophthalmologist started uh, concentrating on the accommodation factors. Uh, yes, base in PRISM will help you in reducing the accommodation. Uh, but uh, most of the designs are working on a myopic defocus uh, concept. But of course, that will also help. Uh, similarly, in uh, terms of uh, myopia control, uh, we also hear a lot of uh, discussions about atropine, uh, prescribing the atropine eye drop. So uh, uh, what is your take on this? It works fantastic. As I said, uh, I usually combine uh, atropine as well as my multiple soft contact lenses or orthokeratology. Uh, most of my children's are on orthokeratology because that's how I started in 2004, I started orthokeratology. And most of the children's who are into sports, uh, into swimming, into active, uh, you know, uh, sports, uh, they enjoy this because it is cosmetically appealing. Secondly, the parents are in control because the lenses are worn, this um, ortho molds are worn during the night when the child is sleeping. In the morning, the lenses are taken out. The child is free of any optical device. So he's free, go outside and enjoy his life. If you give soft contact lenses, there is always a chance that something can go wrong. Uh, spectacles, as you know, child children keep on breaking spectacles. So, but of course you have all the choices depending on the economy, uh, 
uh, how much uh, a parent is ready to spend how much you want to convince your patients it's uh, up to you know you uh, because you have to get convinced first then only you will be able to convince your patients or clients uh, like you said the children are very happy with the orthokeratology lenses and uh, similarly while we're talking about the multifocal scleral contact lenses what was your experience with them uh, how effective are they in the myopic control multifocal soft lenses i was mentioning not scleral i'm sorry sir yes i'm sorry multifocal yeah. soft lenses yeah yeah multifocal soft lenses are wonderful uh, they are available in india since 2018 uh, the addition is plus 3 to plus 4 uh, it works fantastic. Uh, I combine that with the atropine again. See, 0.01% atropine is very good modality. Uh, by the time children comes to me, because I don't see a regular patients, I don't have a optical outlet. Uh, so patients are usually referred to me or they come searching me online. So by the time they come to me, they are already uh, minus two, minus three, or you know, uh, minus five or something like that. So I usually combine uh, with atropine. Uh, the idea is to restrict the progression of myopia less than minus five. The ideal restriction is up to three. If it is less than three, uh, then the child is safe. Uh, he, they may not get uh, early cataracts or glaucoma or uh, any uh, retinal issues. The moment it goes uh, up to minus five, they are into little uh, high risk. But you can still control less than minus five. You are good. You're good. Uh, in relation to the uh, multifocal soft contact lenses, Mr. Murli Shah raises the question, how effective uh, will it be if we prescribe multifocal spectacles instead of contact lens because it might not be affordable to all of the people? Hello? Hello, can you hear me, sir? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? We're not able to hear hear you. So we've uh, experienced a small uh, Sorry, bit of some technical network. issues. Yeah, network connection was uh, at fault. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, sir. So my question was, uh, question was uh, while we're talking about multifocal contact lenses, uh, how effective will it be if we uh, prescribe multifocal spectacles? We've already discussed about the effect of bifocals, but how effective would it be uh, if uh, the patient is not able to afford the multifocal soft contact? Yeah, so uh, with these studies, it has been now proven, right, that it is working. Uh, mm -hmm. With simple bifocal, executive bifocal, you get about 50% uh, efficacy, my eye control. Uh, with these latest designs uh, by uh, my site company, which got a US FDA approval, uh, they claim almost 70 to 74% myopia control which is very good which is almost equivalent to orthokeratology which is 80 percent myopia control so Similarly, definitely it uh, will work sorry Thank you, sir. Thank you for the answer. Similarly, we have another question from Mr. Ananta Podil who asks, sir, what factors can be concluded for myopia control on post-operative IOL implantation for pediatric population since many studies show that uh, progression of myopia on post-operative cases? Yeah, so similar principles. See, what i given you in this 45 minutes, one hour is basic principles you should understand you have to create a myopic defocus at the peripheral retina. So whatever way you have, 
soft contact lens, spectacles, ortho K. Yes, you can do whatever is good for you and you can control the MyPay progression. Of course, you have to add uh, outdoor activities, good eating habits. So this would still be applicable if the patient has IOL implantation? Of course, yes. I will just, uh, it's a one surgery to replace your natural crystalline lens, right? Yes. So you can give the full correction and give additional extra focus to give a myopic defocus at the periphery retina. Follow that principle. It has been proven uh, beyond really? doubts. There are a lot of, lot of research papers online and it is, you know, scientifically guaranteed and proven technology. Uh, similarly, we have received um, uh, many questions about the uh, at what specific age that we target the uh, treatment at, at what age should the patient be prescribed astivision lens for moderate degree of myopic astigmatism. This is the question by Mr. Rithik Gurnani. So he wants to know, would a 20-year-old moderate or high astigmatism benefit from astivision lenses? <laughs> is he an optometrist? <laughs> See, at the age of 20, yes. you're already done. You have caused all the damage, right? What you're going to get out of that? Just leave it, leave it alone. Let the child enjoy his life. <laughs> and pray <laughs> that he doesn't get much problems. See, you have to start early. You have a time limit, right? From the age of four, five years till the age of 16, 18. Beyond that, it's already, you know, if the shape of the eyeball is already taken up, whatever it is. Of course, uh, the newer study shows that the eyeball keep on growing till the age of 24. But how much myopia control you are going to get? It, see, you can't shrink the eyeball. It's already grown, right? It is already enlarged. And it is already causing, going to cause uh, stretch and stress on the retina. So I don't think uh, that's a good choice. If you still uh, want, you can go ahead. But, but would it be? It would not be as effective as uh, if we would start early. Damage is, is already is caused. No? Yeah, yeah. The, the early, early, you start as soon as you find out. That's why I given you those point systems. So the moment the child comes in, anybody comes walks into your clinic, you start, you know, giving points and presenting it to them. Show them this Brian Holden calculator online you know put that thing in their mind i know it the, the parents are not going to accept immediately till they do their own research right so at least give some information let them go online to myopiacontrolresearch.com or some websites and they will understand next time they will come or after six months when they come for a checkup and you notice there is a change in the prescription you can say hey this is what is happening so it's time to act right by the age of 20, if that, that child is coming to you, that means he has come to you before also, right? So the moment you realize that this child is at a risk of developing uh, into a high risk myopia, you start acting, you know, spectacles, of course. See, single vision is no now, it is gone. It is the old, old style. You have to give something better. If you are, you know, thinking from economic point of view, just use at least bifocal, a simple regular bifocal, crypt up bifocal, executive bifocal, you know, uh, whatever you have. If he's, uh, you know, ready to spend a little more, then you can go with the um, uh, the advanced technologies uh, like um, my vision and ST vision and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if the child and parents are more cosmetic oriented, they want continuous uh, myopic, uh, you know, defocus stimulation, then soft contact lenses, multifocal soft contact lenses. And if they really want to enjoy the life, then orthokeratology. As I said, the, the effect is going to uh, differ, the, the modality that you use. Ortho K as of today is the highest uh, effective uh, mode of treatment for myopia control. And of course, you can combine uh, atropine with that. Uh, thank you for the answer, sir. I hope uh, that answers your question, Mr. Rithik Gurnani. Similarly, uh, while coming on the 
uh, specific patients. So uh, Ms. Jyoti asks, which option to prescribe for which patient? And can we fit all myopic patients with orthokeratolensis? Or uh, if, what if the child has binocular disorders? Uh, so in that case, what do we do? Yes. So that's a very good question. See, uh, binocular distortion has to be managed by vision therapist. Or you can learn and it has to be applied, right? See, these lenses are giving you a vision. That is, you are putting a focus on the fovea and you are giving a myopic defocus at the periphery. But both eyes has to work together, right? So that's where the uh, role of uh, vision therapist comes in. And you have to uh, treat the child accordingly. Uh, similarly, uh, a couple of our audiences want to uh, know more about the stick-on. So if you could elaborate on that. Well, that is the, uh, it is non-customized, easy to use, simple device, uh, which has, uh, you know, plus four diapters into that. And it can be stick-on from the backside of the, the spectacles on any, any uh, power. So it is not a customized device. See, uh, the customized device is customized based on the HVID, pupil size, K1, K2, so perfect refraction. So every zone, 360 degree, has a different kind of a optical aberration and there is a uh, chromatic aberration also to get an accurate control. If you use just a stick-on, which is the cheapest uh, modality available, uh, which will work, it's like, you know, it's better than prescribing just a bifocal glasses. Uh, thank you for the answer, sir. Uh, similarly, uh, we have another question. A uh, uh, couple of our audiences also want to know, as an optometrist, uh, which method is best as a general for the control of progression of myopia till date? Uh, as again and again, I've been telling you, orthoperatology mm -hmm. is the best treatment combined with atropine. If for any reason, that is uh, financial reasons, you can go with the multifocal soft contact lenses combined with atropine. And if, uh, you know, if both are not possible, then atropine and uh, healthy lifestyle. And of course, now you have uh, more choices on spectacles, bifocal spectacles, 360 degree, uh, you know, uh, spectacles. So it's up to you what choice you want to give or present to the patient. So see, it's a, uh, practice management. It, of course, this talk is not about practice management. I will not go into that. But you have to judge which patient will benefit with which technology, who is affording kind of patient, who has, uh, you know, issues with the uh, uh, following your uh, advice technique or uh, treatment financially as well as uh, their lifestyle. Because see, all children are not going to be in the same way. Not all children will allow you to put contact lenses in the eyes, right? But eye drops, definitely they will allow. Uh, ortho -K, again, is a parents that the, they are going to put it into children's eyes. So again, that is the most safest thing. Uh, but it's expensive. But it is most effective. So you choose whatever you want. So. Again, going back to that point system, Chandrasekhar Kuresh point system, uh, I guess this is uh, this presentation is going to be recorded and made available afterwards. Uh, so they can again go back to that point system and start putting those points. And if it is less than three, the child or parents can go without any headache. If it is, and of course you are going to monitor every year. Uh, if it is less than six, then he is moderate. Uh, myopic uh, risk and then if it is more than nine then definitely you have to do aggressive myopia management so uh, you can thank you you know yeah give that information yes. use the myopia calculator and convince your uh, parents or child uh, similarly uh, uh, we have another question can we still prescribe ortho key for kids that have lazy eye with high myopia
sorry i lost you uh, i'll Hello? repeat the question uh, yes sir uh, i'll repeat the question uh, can we still prescribe ortho lenses for kids are uh, uh, they have who have lazy eye with high myopia say more than uh, five diopters yes of course of course see you prescribe your ortho lenses and put them on uh, active vision therapy uh, the lazy eyes right amblyopia treatment you can start actively and see if you don't do anything of course you are allowing that uh, laziness or amblyopia to continue right first of all the treatment of lazy eyes what you have to correct first you a proper correction so that the fovea gets information correctly and of course at the same time you are giving ortho k or multiple soft lens so that will uh, uh, help to control the myopia progression and see the ortho k is available up to minus eight diopters so which i don't think the children have minus eight you know of course it depends on at what age uh, they come to you Uh, thank you for the answer, sir. Similarly, but, another, uh, another earlier question. You catch them, you can treat them better. Okay. Uh, so, uh, talking about that, we have another a question by Mr. Harish who asks what age will be ideal to start the myopia, myopia progression treatment? <laughs> uh, as early as possible. See, I have started uh, at the age of five also because uh, both the parents were myopic, high myopic, and they already knew that uh, there is a, you know, history of uh, their uh, generations. Uh, so they know that the child is definitely going to become myopic. So we started at the age of five. So right, early, uh, as so... early as possible. Why, why do wait? You know, because, you know, once the eyeball is, you know, enlarged, you cannot shrink it back. So hmm. now is the time to start controlling it. All right, thank you for the answer. So similarly, uh, Ms. Jyoti Mundra asks, uh, have you prescribed anyone with the stick-on lenses and what is your take on it along with the cosmos uh, issues that we can face with the stick-on? Uh, frankly, I don't uh, prescribe stick-ons. Uh, I, I do customized job. Uh, if they can't afford my treatment, then I refer to my best friends who can help them with uh, cheaper options. All right. All right. Uh, so uh, we have. I, I, I'm going. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some little, uh, you know, practical tips here. Uh, this is a practice management tip. I am going to spend the same amount of hours, say 45 minutes to one hour, convincing that parents what is good, what is not, what is myopia control, how it works, this, that, that. And after spending that much time with them, if I just take a consultation fee and give them some cheap option, uh. It's not a good practice management, right? So, and uh, in my practice of so many years, I have realized that the more you charge to the patient, the patient respects you more. <laughs> uh, so it up, it's up to you. It, it is not charging. You are giving them the best, right? See, I've, I have been traveling around the world, attending, you know, in numeral uh, conference for my patients so who's going to pay for that knowledge my patients right so they will benefit out of this uh, thank you for the answer sir and i have received multiple questions uh, with our audience asking how to get certificate for myopic control of optometrist and what is the process for it so could you please uh, briefly elaborate on that yeah, so if you go online, there are three companies who are offering a free certification. Uh, I, I advise everyone, even tonight you go online and uh, you know get yourself certified, which is uh, freely available. Uh, and at least you will get started into that. You won't have the um, practical hands-on, of course, but you will understand the basic principles, right? What is what, what is what? And then if you really interested, you can uh, go to shakerai.com and send them an email and fix up timing with them. And they have a lot of courses, one day course for just uh, spectacle designing, one day course for uh, multiple soft contact lenses and a two day course for orthokeratology.
Thank you so much for your answers, sir. And we are wrapped up with our questions now. On behalf of IBIDS and our audience, we would like to thank you, sir, Ms. Dr. Chandrasekhar Chavan, for giving us your valuable time and the lovely experience and knowledge that you have imparted on us today. So on behalf of our Optum IBIDS team, I'd like to request you to share your experience on today's session with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was really wonderful. Uh, so enthusiastic, enthusiastic crowd. A lot of good questions that means they are thinking so this is what the whole idea of you know spending uh, one hour with you to ignite your minds you can go beyond regular optometry try to offer something better because ultimately these are our brothers and sisters and this is our future right children are our future and one third of the world's population lives in this continent and as an ik practitioner we are the one who's responsible for offering them the good care for their eyes. I really enjoyed, I congratulate uh, for Optom uh, organization for doing a good work. I've been monitoring their uh, live webinars uh, throughout and it's really helping uh, the optometry and uh, eye care practitioners community. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your kind words. And uh, it is uh, encouragement like this that motivates us to do better and uh, bring better content for our audiences and upgrade the optometry status in uh, within us as well. And it was an honor, absolute honor and pleasure of ours to have you here today with us, sir. And this brings us to the end of the program today. I would also like to thank our audience for being ever so supportive, kind, attentive and interactive. On that note, I would like to end the meeting. The session will be on YouTube soon. Stay tuned for more sessions and programs by iBits and for Optum. You can also visit us at www.foroptum.com for more information on for Optum and iBits. Also join us on social media, WhatsApp, Facebook, and Instagram. Stay home, stay safe, have a good day.